Welcome back to the Outdoor Talk Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Hope you all are having a great day. I know we are. It's pouring down rain. It's been raining for the last three weeks, but you know what? We're Does, dry and it's inside. It doesn't even matter. It's nice. We're it's drinking, nice. So. What are we drinking here? 903. 903. 903 beverage. Level level 3. 170 grams, milligrams of caffeine. Mm-hmm. Holy Yes, mo- sir. All right, I'm about to get tweaking. <laughs> about to get tweaking. You might not like it. I don't know. Oh, that's good. Hey, it's a little Black Widow. Black that's Widow. Black Widow. I just t- tongue-tied up right there. But hey. I'm all twisted, too. All right, so we ended up going on Nelson's Bachelor Party Weekend. Yes, to sir. To Cho Canyon Lake of all lakes. It's about a seven-hour drive for us or so. Yeah, it's a right long drive. It. Seven hours, seven and a half. Small little town. I think it took us eight because we took the back road. Hey, you know what? We thought it was going to be a great idea to to take the route that we did, but hey, we ended up getting there. We had a great time. We shot some fish. We did. We but shot some. Nelson, he is something else with that bow in his hand. <laughs> he'll 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 see like that fish. Do, what I like hey, to do, boy. he'll see the fish before you and take the shot before you, unless he's telling you to you know shoot it. Of course. Hey, I give you all a chance to. Hey, there's a fish. And you got a split second to shoot. If you don't shoot, I'm shooting over you. <laughs> there it is. There it is. But no, we went down there. That was our, our main goal was to shoot huge alligator gar. Um, uh, that lake, man, and it holds them too. Yeah. Choke Canyon is well known for big gator gar, but the lake's like super low this year. They've been in a drought and like all those good spots were kind of... Couldn't get to them. Couldn't get to them. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I mean, we just get, we didn't get on the big fish. We got on a bunch of small fish and it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Well, that's something that um, uh, I think it was Blake. No, no, no. It was it was you saying that it was a, a good bass. No, Peyton is who who I think ended up telling telling us on the way down that it was yeah, a good bass a, bass fishing lake. It is though. a really good bass fishing lake. All those lakes down South Texas are really good bass fishing lakes. I see, you would never think that too. Uh-huh. Like location wise, you're like, how how is there going to be a ten pounder in here? Yeah. Well, you're uh, close to Mexico, and I went to Mexico bass fishing oh, at El Salto, this and is that true. sucker was. That's awesome lake right there. If you get a chance to go to El Salto or any of those Mexican lakes, do it. It's a blast. But while we're on choke, I just saw a deal this past weekend. I think it's this past weekend. There was a tournament down there, but first place was a 210 pound alligator gar. Here's a picture of it right here. That sucker is huge. Oh my god. 210. I didn't say how long it is, but that sucker right there. That's that's look look at second place, 202. Dude, that's Okay, that dude's easily five foot something, and that alligator guards. Those are some big old boys right there. That's like that's a big that's a big fish. The biggest one I've seen looks like a legit alligator. I know the biggest one I've ever seen. My brother shot it. It was seven foot three, and that sucker weighed that was recent though, right? One hundred and eighty or right at two hundred something like that. I can't remember how much it weighed, but it was seven three, seven or seven two, seven three, seven two. That's close enough. Did it take Did it take all three of y'all to get it in the boat, or just I wasn't with him? It was just two of him. It was was just two of the guys. It was Ben and his uh, a guy he works with, and they shot that sucker. That's crazy. Ben shot it, and then the other guy had a backup arrow in him, and then they had to shoot it with the nine millimeter in the head, kill it. Who? Okay, so there was one, the the one before last. Then his other big one. Oh, this it was past- you, Payton, and yeah, him. That was this year. The seven three was last year. Okay, and uh, but he was still big though, right? Yeah, we shot a six eight. Oh, all three of see, us shot that sucker. Sorry, suckers, it man. That's all- one of my goals is to go out there. Yeah, you always dream of it, especially when you start shooting the little alli- those little alligator gar so hard to hit. The needle nose. The, yeah, the needle nose ones. Yeah, and then you see these big daddies, and you're like, oh, if I get a shot at that, you know, that's easy money right there. I uh, know. And then you go to shoot shoot at one, and hey, they're they're hard. You it's think tough. those big ones are easy? Mm-hmm. I promise you, you'll have one right beside the boat, and you will shoot right underneath <laughs> that sucker, right over him, and he's as big as a freaking barrel. Yeah, but those little needle nose, it's like you can hit them mm-hmm. or you can't. It's so weird. Like yeah. sometimes I'm like fired, just like whack, 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 oh. smoking them. And then you hit the long shot, and then you yeah. miss the up close shot. Exactly. But see, well, I not to say that I created or I invented this now, but there was a little technique. Yeah. And Keaton, he was over exaggerating it. I, I know you saw it that night. All right. We were all out there. Um, but no, you would. I would, as I'm drawing back, I would bend as far over the boat as possible with, get, you know, get real <laughs> close to it and just light it up. Yeah. Which he took note of that. And then he almost was touching the water, was shooting these fish. It was hilarious. But he's like, I got, but he ended up getting one. He did. He ended up getting one. Yeah. He, so he shot a bunch that night. I think everybody shot a bunch of fish that Man, we stayed up, good. what, till like four o'clock in the morning? Dude, it was foggy too. It was really foggy. You couldn't see 20 yards in front of the boat. So it the was, the lake on the actual map, you're like, okay, yeah, we can navigate this lake it'll be pretty simple but with all the fog and then running into uh, a huge pile of trees dead trees yeah that lake is covered in trees dude it was, it was solid ridiculous. 
I know. We didn't it's even. real rocky. There's yeah. a bunch of big rocks and like I didn't expect it to be a good bow fishing lake, but it is. Dude ended up being a, a pretty pretty solid little little hey, he's right there by the cabin too. Right where oh, we were that staying. was the one we're you're talking about, we were actually on Lake Corpus. Oh, okay. Well that's still that that's was where still, we stayed. We stayed yeah. on Lake Corpus at an Airbnb and uh we ended up driving to Choke Canyon, which is like forty five or an hour drive north and bow fishing there during the day. That was fun. That was a good time. And see, uh, like for all you out there that actually don't do any type of bow fishing, um, I always thought it has to be done at night. That's your best time to do it. But what I've come to learn, come to find out through through all these guys that you know do it all the time, your best your best opportunity to kill a big big gar is in the daytime. Oh yeah, daylight I like, hours. I like bow fishing during the day a lot better than at night. I think you get a, a chance at a bigger gar. I, I personally, I've never shot an alligator gar at night. I've only shot them during the day. This is crazy. I shoot needle nose and, and short nose, right, and not all night long. But no. What no about carp? Guard. What about carp though? Oh, carp! Can I you shoot can, more of those at night? Cause at they don't night. spook as easy. Uh, in the day, they spook really, really easy. And then buffalo too. Buffalo, I know. Same, same thing. Same deal. You shoot a few of them during the day. I think I shoot more buffalo than I do carp during the daylight hours. But I still shoot more of them at night because they don't spook very easy. They're nice. really, really spooky fish. Like in a gator gar, they're spooky too. But if you're real quiet and you just like don't make a whole lot of noise on the boat, just cruise slowly, yeah. you'll cruise right up on them gator gar just chilling in the sun. Dude, that's awesome. So since we're on a little tips and tricks uh, rabbit hole per se, well, let's go ahead and I-, I wanted to tell the people about the trick I learned from Peyton. Okay. Okay, so you're driving the boat at night, you got your lights shining, you got guys up on the front deck, guys in the back, whatnot. You're actually able, I kept seeing it, it's like he was putting his hand out in front of his face. And I was like, why is he doing that? And then I did it. It blocks all the lights underneath the boat, so you're able to see out further. Yeah. You know, looking for trees, stumps, et cetera, okay. or just, you know, trying to fi- figure out where you're going, you know. So what the problem was, he had his bow fishing lights on the whole time over going across the lake. Yes. So it's kind of blinding, short, short, like real close to the boat, it's kind of blinding, so you can't see far off. What me and Ben do in our boat, and mm-hmm. his boat, we don't run with the bow fishing lights on across really? the lake. We just have two little spotlights, and it shines far out, oh, so you can see, see. farther. That's and cool. Sometimes we don't even run lights at all because you can see with the moonlight and yeah. you can see across the lake like bass fishing. You don't have big lights on your boat. You just cruise across the lake. Yeah. It's, it is kind of sketchy at times. Yeah, though, when you use when your, you're driving. Yeah, but if you use your graph and you oh, know yeah, the, yeah. if you know the lake pretty well. Yeah. A really, a really, really handy tip is go out during the day and put waypoints across that lake. Ooh. So when you go back at night, you just use your graph and just follow them through the sticks. And it's it's very. It would have been nice to have a graph at uh, Choke Canyon though. Yeah. Back oh, there in the, the creek channel. Yeah, I want to go back, though. I definitely want to go back. I do like bow fishing here because I like the river. The river is so much. I, Same I amount it, of days, though. Same amount of days. We at least need that many, I think, to, yeah. to get out there. And, definitely. And I said we go for like a, like a long time. Yeah. Hang out the whole time. Maybe do, do more bass fishing. Okay. But uh, I will say like river fishing is where it's at. I just yeah, like the I river. I feel been. more comfortable on the river just because I've been there more than I've been at Choke. You yeah. Know? Uh, the river... When you see it, I cross it very seldomly, but when you go across it, you're like, man, I, it's, it'd be terrifying. We hunted it once. Yeah, you know, on it. We got, we got the chance to hunt it once, and even throwing decoys out on it, it's, it's, it's not like a terrifying feeling, but you're like, one bad move, you could go downstream maybe, <laughs> you got a big log going to hit you. Yeah. I, dude, I don't know. It's river, just yeah, scary, river, you know? Your parents always say, hey, don't go over there. Don't go, don't go near that river, boy. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that bad happen on the river. Yeah. But it's not as scary as people think. See, when you're down there all the time, it's like, you just got to be smart. It's about anything. It's yeah. like driving down the highway. I, I mean, understandable. Yeah, you just got to be smart what you're doing and just don't, when the river's up and the, and the water is flowing like super hardcore, I won't get out there because I've seen 20, 30 foot trees come out of nowhere and just shoot up in the air and then hit like a damn whale. You're kidding. I promise you. The river is out of the banks, like flowing. The trees going up? Into the Dude, I promise you, 30, 40 foot trees. Just, oh my word. They're not inside. You don't see them. And then yeah. just, boom. No. And then splash. Uh. Like, you see the whole tree, 40 foot up, and then hit the hit the water. And like just, a damn humpback <laughs> whale. Just, <laughs> boom. <laughs> see that old tree whale over Scariest there? Scariest thing ever. That's when you don't get in the river yeah. with the boat. Okay. Well, then, there you go. Yeah. We got it. We got to figure it out. Okay. So, but since we're talking about bow fishing, you just got a new rig. I got a new, I got a new reel. 
New reel. Well, I got a new bow last year. It, technically, it's, I upgraded it's, it's all Because my, my previous bow fishing bow, I had an old uh, Browning Barracuda that I shot for years. I know most of y'all bow button? fishers out there. No, this is a bow. Oh, I'm talking so, about the bow. Oh, you're just talking about the bow. Yeah, okay. the bow. I know a bunch of y'all bow fishers out there know what a Browning Barracuda is because they've made them for a long time, and then they stopped making them. They sold them to PSC. That was a great bow, but that the limb cracked on me. Oh, man. So I was like, you know what? Time to upgrade. So I got me an Onada osprey and that sucker is like a cadillac it, it looks good too yeah i like them it's like the it's like top bow fishing bows there's custom built of uh, different variations of mm-hmm. lever bows but you're talking about shoots like a damn dart <laughs> and the problem is i had it set up like 40 pounds because that's how i used to shoot 40 yeah yeah but this thing blows it shoots so good is it still set at 40 though yeah it's set at 40 that's okay. that's the problem it just blows through a little small fish Uh-oh. and then i have to like cut my line or untie it every time so I'm about to crank it down to like 30, as really? low as it'll go. I think mine's a 30 to 50, and I wish I would have got up like a 30 to 40 or a 20 to 40. I think, I think mine's like at 60, Yeah, well, it, which is terrible. Yeah. Now that you're saying yours is bad at 40. Now, I don't I don't go full draw, though. Yeah, I don't uh, either. I just snap shoot real, like, real yeah. short. But well, that sucker just, it's so in tune, mm. it just blows through them fish like Dude, that's nothing. Nice. I'm going to have to look into those, though, if yeah. I'm getting more serious into it. Oh, I... I wish I would upgrade it a long time ago. Really? They are pretty pricey. It's about seven hundred bucks, eight hundred dollars. But if you bow fish all the time like yeah. we bow fish, yeah. As soon as the fish come out, which yeah. they're good in the wintertime. The big buffalo really? really good in the wintertime. Yeah. They'd ought to be you would never big see buff- you'd never expect that. Big buffalo are shot during the wintertime. That's awesome. In springtime. But we bow fish. Side note here, little pat on the back a for lot. me. Twenty seven pound PR. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I shot a thirty three buffalo and then uh me and Peyton tag team the forty. Wow. That's the biggest one we saw. I've seen bigger, but... Dude, that's a huge fish. That's a big old fish. That'd be cool, a cool little male. And she wasn't full of eggs either. Really? If she would have been full of eggs, I bet you 50 oh, plus. Oh, my word. Okay, so we talked about your setup that you use. Um, I, can, I can go in depth a little bit about what I use. It's nothing super, super spectacular. I think it's an old Hoyt. Um, I'm actually not... No, it's a PSC. It's a no old PSC. It's an old Excuse PSC. Me. I remember you showed me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the blacked out like camo, like old, old school. It's got camo. the little wheels. Yeah, they're not the even little cams. Cam- yeah, what well, they're little bitty, you know, uh, <laughs> pinwheel cams. Yeah. I don't know what you'd call those. Um, and then I have a bottle bottle reel, and it's a super cheap setup. It's my grandpa's yep. um, bulletproof. Yeah, basically. Yeah, if you're just getting a bow fishing, yeah. or if you've been bow fishing a long time, a lot of people like the bottle reels over the push buttons or like the mega mouth. I just heard a I've lot used of incidents both. happen with the push buttons. That was that was my concern. That's what I'm saying. They're bulletproof. Great for anybody. So I, I that's what I used to use too. Then I I like the faster retrieve of a push button. Yeah. And I just I feel more comfortable with it, and I can shoot and reel in real fast and yeah. shoot. It just I like it. See, I like that, it set up. That's cool. whatever you prefer. Ben got the Mega Mouth, which is like it has it's a what? free it's a free spool and reel. Mm-hmm. So like you can you don't have to push a button. You just shoot, but it's got a little T bar handle. For the drag system, and you just grab that T bar, and then you reel, and you have a full drag Dude. and a full break, and it is top sweet. of the line. Yeah, it's it all sound, brass. Sounds like it. Yeah. Now, okay, there is an extension. One of the, I, I think this was your setup. There was an extension that came up underneath. Yeah, like a little uh, line guide, like a rod, See, like a little mini rod, pretty much. And I, that's what I really. That was one of the features that I really liked about your bow when we were yeah. out there. You know, that shooting. saves your reel. Okay. From like when you when you put torque against your string, okay, it doesn't put all the pressure in the gears. It pulls, uh, it puts it all in that rod, so you don't cool. mess up the inside of your reel. Well, you get what you pay for. You do. So and I those mean, reels are dirt cheap, and you can buy every single part online. That's crazy. So I rebuild them all the time. I have two of them. I Amazon. Them. Uh, I don't know about Amazon, but you can get them off of Bowfish and Extreme. Okay. Dot com. I think is what it's called. Just informing the people on where to go. Yes, sir. We'll have some links in the show notes below. There you go. To these places where you can check out our stuff and our gear we're using yes sir hey okay so dark right dark. when you go bow fishing typically it's dark not all the time not all the but time. at dark what's good light right luminoc tell us about it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well this year i got some carbon arrows and i've never shot carbon arrows i usually just shoot the fiberglass bow fishing arrows well, I got two carbon arrows for video purposes, so I can stick a luminoc in the back of that sucker, and it's sweet. It's it's like you see that laser beam, pretty much. But he was talking about it <clears throat> coming up here to yeah. Joe Canyon. He's like, "Man, I got my luminoc. Super pumped to get to use it." Now I don't know if it's my rest. I have the factory uh, Onada rest. It's like the little shelf, and it's you know it's like the little aluminum cradle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really nice rest. It's super. It's like bulletproof. But 
I think that thing is a little bit tighter than my arrow, those arrow, arrow diameters. Oh, okay. And I think the back of that knot caught and, uh. and it shattered it. And I like dry fired my bow because <laughs> that knock was like, I guess it cracked in the beginning and then I went to shoot again and like, mm-hmm. pow. Yeah. And it's like, what the heck was that? <laughs> and that knock just broke in pieces. I'm like, oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> well, I got this 25, and I got a $50 <laughs> bow fishing arrow. Just, yeah. Now I got to go find another knock. Well, so have a whole bunch of knocks in your boat. That's one thing you always keep: knocks and super glue. There it is. Bow fishing tip and trick number seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when when we we're out there, everybody's eyes is is somewhat focused on the just the floor surface of the the actual water. You know, you're looking yeah. for fish, mm-hmm. and if one person sees a fish, then all the all the eyes are drawn to that one specific fish. Well, during this process, Nelson's back here. He's t- back to my right a little bit, and you just hear a loud. <laughs> And you're like, what just happened? And no, what what even happened in Luminol? Did you have it? Yeah, I still got this. Because, like, yeah, you were, the, you were shining the little glowing piece up, and we were like, yeah, what like just the, happened? The light and the insert yeah. was still in the arrow, but okay. the, the knock part that hooks on your string was like shattered, and it's gone. So I just had this little light waving around, like, what the heck? <laughs> Oh man, because you were playing with it, you were turning it on and off, and yeah. you're like, I can just use it later. I don't know what use you said. Use a little flashlight or something. Use it for reading a book and the deer stand. <laughs> I don't read. But <laughs> you, yeah, no. Do you think though, if you would have had it on a different type of arrow, do you think it it would have been more helpful to the bow fishing trip? I think if I had a different rest, because I think that knock's just a little okay. too big for that rest. Okay, maybe I don't know. I have to, I'm gonna try it again, and uh, we'll see. You but, should just try to shoot carbon arrows, like just on a trip. Yeah, I mean, always you, you you carry backups. I, I know all oh, yeah, y'all do. I carry at least at a minimum three to four arrows with me every trip. But I'm a beginner. I still just keep my one. No. Yeah, you can a one arrow will last a long time as long as you take care of it. As long as you take care of it and <laughs> yeah, twist the tip. T- yeah, twist the tip <laughs> and glue them knocks on. Let me tell you, they were like, yeah, make sure the the tip's tight. And I said, excuse me. It's like just speaking gibberish to me. And uh, Peyton actually went over there and literally tightened my tip. If you don't, if the tip's not tightened, lots of things can well, happen. Well, the barbs will flip around, you'll lose a fish. Exactly. So that's like the main reason you want to have your tips tight. And it's like when you're bow fishing, I constantly just grab the tip. I'm always tightening the yeah. tip, and I'm always pressing the button. Like that's what I'm doing. Like just while we're cruising along, I'm just hitting <laughs> that button and tightening my tip, like over and over. Like it's just a good habit to get into. It really is. So, for your beginners out there that are interested in getting into to bow fishing, let, let's just talk real quick. Give them a couple tips on things that they can do to get out there, get more involved, and um, get well, into it. All right. Well, every creek, stream, lake nearby your house, I promise you, it'll have trash fish in it. If there's carp, there's buffalo, there's gar. Right. There might be some bowfin in there. Trash fish. Bowfin. Drum. What is a bowfin? Both in dogfish, grinnell. Okay, same yeah, thing. Grinnell, grinnell. There it is. Yeah, everybody knows them different okay, names, but yeah. like the actual names of both in. That's pretty that's cool. Like name. in the book or whatever. They stink too, though. They smell like crap. They stink. smell like a gar. They stink. I know. Ben shot one at Spillway last year. Sweet little fish, beautiful yeah. colors. I heard they're fun on frogs. Really? But let's get out of that. No, we'll I about- lost one in the tournament. We we're fishing. Really? A grinnell. Yeah, and that's why I know they stink. I was mad. But anyways, yeah. that's that's a rabbit hole story. But right anyways, there. any creek, any pond, I promise you, within a mile or two of your house, if you have any water, there's going to be some trash fish in there. You can go down there, get you a cheap setup, go find you a boat, a pond shop, a recurve. It doesn't matter what it is. 25 pounds is all you need. And get you a reel. I used to use a wraparound reel. And Tanner didn't know what a wraparound yeah. was. He explained the story to me. It's literally like a, a circle that yeah. has a bolt on it that you screws into your stabilizer and it has line wrapped around it and you just shoot and the line unravels and you have to wrap it back up. <laughs> Super simple. That's what I started with when I was a kid, like yeah. my little recurve, just shooting the perch. Any spillway that you have, majority of the time those fish are out there, they're, I don't know what they do, they just come to the surface. They're, See, they're feeding. They right. feed real close to the surface and right up on the banks and stuff at night. Hey, little little story. We used to go down the spillway all night long. Like we'd go out there, as soon as it got dark, and stay till like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. But what we do, we have a, a backpack with a car battery in the back of it with a Q beam spot lock wired up to that car battery. That's and we'd sit awesome. there until that battery run dead. We'd charge it up all day long and then go out all night long carrying that 20 pound battery in a backpack and we yeah. just take turns. Whoever's on the spot lock. That, that's awesome. I'm talking about dedicated right there. Man. I'm talking about 15 years old going down there. So just because you don't have a boat don't mean you can't do this. Yeah. So whatever, any creek, get you a light. Go during the day. Test it out. Go during the daylight hours and nighttime hours. Night, you might see more fish, I would say, but 
I would say during the daylight hours, you'll see more quality fish. Bigger fish. Bigger fish, in my my personal experience. Now, I see a lot of people shoot big, big fish at night, too, but... Another th- another thing too, if you don't want to go or you don't want to go out there and build your own bow fishing rig just with what's laying around the house, you can always get on it. Like I'm not saying Amazon per se. Amazon's got good bow. Craigslist. I mean, there's there's plenty of Endless places opportunities to find Ask a cheaper uncle. bow. Mm-hmm. You know that that shoots well or good enough to kill a fish. Yeah. I mean, my, that old PSE. I mean, it's probably 19. Yeah, you got that from your grandpa. 1970s man. Grandpa, it's an old your uncle, bow. your your mom, your dad, your sister, whoever's Any, got an old bow. There it is. Get it, slap a reel on that. You can get a reel seat for 25 bucks. You can get a, a jug reel for, I think, like 50, 75 it's, bucks. It's not too expensive. Great reels. Great reels. I think reels. I left with the bottle reel and an arrow. I mean, the, the arrow already came with the tip on it and everything like that. Yep. But for like 100 bucks. Yeah. If perfect. that. So Yeah, it's a good setup, too. And it'll last you as long as you want. Man, I hadn't changed the line since I started. Yeah. And it's, it's not a, something you might want to do. I always yeah. change my line, if not twice <laughs> a year, once a year. Okay. Well. I probably need to do that then. Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't go out shooting. Yeah, like every weekend or whatnot like that. Mm-hmm. When you when, let's say for example fishing bass fishing tournaments, mm-hmm. Elise's Const- dad, what is he doing constantly before tournament? Yeah, changing. Well, changing you want your stuff to be dialed in. Exactly. What, I like my stuff to be dialed in. I'm not a bass. I'm, but if it's like, competition, I'm, you get what I'm yeah. saying. Like if you're in it for mm-hmm. money or if you're in it because you're super competitive into something, you're gonna make sure your crap's together. Yeah, you're right. So well, just like deer hunting, I want my deer my stuff dialed in. When I'm bow fishing. Oh, yeah. I want my stuff dialed in. So I want to get out there and well, let me tell you, smoke dude, a bacon. Your stuff was dialed in on that 12 point oh, last day of the season. Yes, last, sir. The old 308. Oh. Old 308 Put to the, the heart. Right to the tracks. heart. <laughs> Nelson, <clears throat> we get out of this, the stand because I had hunted the last day too and I was waiting for my, my big old deer to, to walk by. And Nelson gave me a holler once I was leaving. He said, Hey, I said, What's up? He said, Uh, I forgot what you even said. Dude. You either we kill one. Take my picture of my yeah. bow. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, I ended up coming and take, taking some photos for him. It was awesome. When I saw it, he was holding those horns up, and yep. it was just greatness. Great, oh, greatness in a photo. Or well, maybe I can get you to take me a pic. Maybe I can get you to take a picture of me holding a big old gator gar. Oh, like eight, eight footer, eight foot. <laughs> I want to try to shoot shoot it. Do with we need you, to though. go. Maybe we can yeah. go. I can't go this weekend, but maybe we can go one day this week. So another person that went on the trip with us was Peyton, and he actually just sold his boat. Now, keep in mind, his boat went through a rough time yeah. while we're out there. And he he split that prop. I know. He split that sucker, like ripped it. In it two. looked like a, someone took a pair of scissors to it. I know. If scissors like could shears. actually like go through that. <laughs> he just had an aluminum prop, and it just it bent up on the logs, and then we bent it back, and then it ended up tearing. But yeah, he sold his boat, and he's going to get an airboat now. So is he really? He is. Okay, he sweet. can find one. I didn't boat, know what he was doing, dude. Boats and cars and everything right now is like crazy, crazy. Can't you can't find nothing. But yeah, but we'll we'll go and uh, we'll shoot some fish. I want to get back on the river. The okay. river's up right now. And this is a really good time to shoot big fish. So we'll end this podcast with a cherry on top. Let's hear it. Biggest, best fish. Where are they located at? The river. The river. Okay, different. Okay, on a river. I look, when we look for big fish, we're looking for, like, when the river's up and flooded, we're looking for no current, stagnant, hot water up underneath good big know. willow trees that hang over the, the over the creeks and the rivers. Mm-hmm. Back in them sloughs, some fish will get in there, and they just like that calm water to get out of the current, and then they chill right in the sun, just sun, I, sunning. That's what sunning. they do. They sun. <laughs> get a sun. But a gator gar, in any gar, they have an air pocket, so they have to come up and get air. They right. A, I don't know if it's a lung... Y'all can do your research on these things, but I know they come up and get air. So they're always close to the surface, but they also sit up there in sun during right. really hot weather. Well, some look dead too. And you're like, hey, it's a dead gar, but it's it it's like actually a lot. Li- it's alive. Yeah. Some of them look like a log sitting there and you're like, that's a log. No, it's a fish. <laughs> and you shoot it and he takes off. But we look for uh, big, usually they're not very deep, honestly. Big, I don't know. Diff- we shot fish in deep water and shallow water, yeah. but I look for hardly any current. Okay. And then, like, flooded areas. Okay. Just clear water if you can see it. If you can't get clear water, that's fine. You might have to just wait for them to pop and then shoot them real fast. But. And then, I know every lake's different, but can you get on a pattern? Uh, so, like, let's say you killed a five-footer in, like, seven foot of water. Could you stay in five, uh, five to seven foot of water, you know, and potentially yeah. kill m- more big fish like that? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Okay. Um, I, we cover as much water as we can. Okay. That's, that's, like, the goal. We just try to cover as much water as we can. 
in different spots like in stumps and stuff we'll get in a whole bunch of fish and then maybe on the weed lines on the weed lines or yeah. like mud banks i know mud banks are really good for like buffalo and then like the grass is really good for grass carp and and big commons and then for gator guard and stuff like i said we usually get those underneath the willow trees like or right in the sun around the edge of the sun in the shadows yeah that's where the big fish sit there you go there you have it yes sir how to kill a big fish part 101 101 with nelson cobb if y'all like these bow fishing topics uh give us a comment and whatever let us know if you like them what we need to talk what we need to talk about and uh we can go over it or there, we can... there's one tip though I, I do what i personally want to end with real quick and that is do not be afraid to shoot people what do <laughs> it kind of sounded weird when i said that shoot don't people? be afraid no do not be afraid to shoot period People. Oh, okay. period, people. It sounded like you said, "Do not be afraid to shoot people." No, okay, we might have to cut that out then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, last tip I want to end with, real quick, too, is do not be afraid to shoot at what you're seeing. Oh, is that oh, a fish? Yeah. I mean, if you shoot and it's yeah. a stick, it doesn't really matter. You might get stuck in the stick, and you go there, and you might lose an arrow. There but, it is. There it yeah. is. But Ben, Ben's story. You want to mention that? That or tell well, that, him a little yeah, bit about that six foot eight. We shot this year. I was like, hey, Ben, what's that up there? He's like, oh, it's just a log. Well, he shot at it anyways. And that sucker just, boom, took off. It looked like a log sitting there. That creek was so muddy. And it, it, we just saw the shadow. He shot at it. And, and it was a six foot eight Dude, gator guard. That's so crazy. Big old fish. So don't be afraid to shoot of what you're seeing. I mean, uh, polarized glasses and nowadays, you know. 100%. Real... We should have said at the beginning polarized, polarized, polarized during the daylight hours. Yes. And it's really not a bad idea to wear some safety glasses when you go out at night oh yeah no. i've been seeing some guys on online and stuff with they're not shooting safety slides that's a whole different thing maybe we'll get that next time maybe we'll get into that in the next podcast and get all tongue twisted over here this thing black widow <laughs> 170 milligrams of caffeine's got me all wired up shout out to 903 <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's uh let's end it right here thank y'all for listening to this podcast you got anything else tanner no man i'm, I'm enjoying these podcasts y'all keep Keep staying tuned because yeah. we've got a lot, a lot in store for y'all. Yeah, we want to hear y'all's feedback, so leave us a comment. Give us a like and share these podcasts, please, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Get us famous like your Bitcoin. <laughs> like your Bitcoin. <laughs> the Doge. <laughs> the good old Doge. <laughs> Appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have an awesome week. Appreciate it. Peace.